Hi everyone, I'm starting this week's update in the greenhouse. I had to show you this. One of the black cherry tomato plants is trying to escape, I guess. That's a roof vent in the roof of the greenhouse. It opens automatically when the temperature rises in the greenhouse to ventilate it some. And one of the trusses of blossoms from the black cherry is looking up the top of the roof today. I don't know what's going to happen when it keeps opening and closing, but uh, I thought that was kind of interesting anyway. This is one of the black cherries inside the greenhouse. And I'm starting to develop some pretty good sized tomatoes for a cherry tomato. Um, several on that particular truss. And if you look out towards the end, it's still got more blossoms and I presume some of those that the blossoms have fallen off of, there's more tiny tomatoes in there as well. This is the greenhouse cucumber variety, Carmen, which started blooming earlier in the week. It has a number of small cucumbers on it. I'll show you the small cucumbers, but I want to uh, get over there and put my hand in front of one of those leaves to give you an idea of the size of the leaves. They look more like squash leaves to me than a cucumber leaf. They're huge. That's just one of the leaves. I'll put my hand over there to give you an idea. They are very big. And this thing is, seems to be growing about a foot every two or three days. It's already reached up pretty much to the top of the greenhouse. And you can see some of the uh, some of the cucumbers. There are a number of them on there already. As I guess I've said before, it's a hybrid, only has female blossoms, and every blossom produces a, a cucumber, those long English-type cucumbers that you see plastic-wrapped in, in greenhouses. Soon I think I'm going to be overrun with them. Well, I've been waiting for my red china eggplant to bloom, expecting purple blossoms like most eggplants have, and it's blooming, and they're white. Um, several more down below here find them. There they are. No fruit yet. It's just started to bloom. Interesting thing, this larger plant has dark red stems, and the one in behind that's been struggling has got green stems. So Once again, I don't think these are coming true from seed. Um, There's something that I got from the uh, heirloom uh, Yahoo group. Uh, I suspect whoever collected the seeds had several kinds of eggplant growing in the garden, and what I've got here are some sort of crossovers. Randy and Amanda are harvesting ground cherries out of their greenhouse. Uh, I've got a number of them on these quite large plants in here, but nothing ready to fall off yet. When they're ripe, they fall off, and you know they're ready to eat. And I was glad to learn from them that they turn yellow, sort of a yellowish brown when they fall off. If I seen that happening in here. I probably would have just thought that uh, there's something terribly wrong with the brown cherries, but turning brown yellow is normal, I guess. Well, we've had between a half and three quarters of an inch of rain this week, although it's just clouded over quickly. Right now, it looks like we might get a shower this afternoon. But I'm glad we didn't get any more rain, and that gives me more chance to uh, make compost tea and add that to the garden. If it rains a lot, I can't do that. Already waterlogged. I've, I've harvested just about all of the uh, light green lettuces. I think the, the variety was called Gat Jean d'Or. Um, they were starting to bolt, so I picked them quickly and took them in and been using them, having large salads every day. They're delicious. This particular red variety, which is called Marvée des Quatre Saisons, uh, for some reason isn't bolting at all, not that I'm complaining. It's starting to make nice little heads, so that will last longer, I guess. As I harvest out a, a square, I'm planting more rutabagas. Um, I have a patch of rutabagas growing over in one of the other beds. It's coming along quite nicely, but... I thought I would add more. They're a nice cold weather crop, and here they should continue to grow right up all through to the end of October anyway. Um, they don't mind frost. Actually, most of the older gardeners around here won't harvest theirs until there's been several hard frosts, because that makes them sweeter. And for you, Gia de Cadien, I was looking on the seed packet, which purports to be bilingual, 
and it says in French that the rutabaga is called a chou de Siam. Translated back into English, that would be a Siamese cabbage. Have you ever heard it called that in French? Uh, it seems kind of strange to me how anybody would compare a cabbage to a rutabaga turnip type thing. French air couvert that I brought back this spring uh, are growing very well and they're bush beans so they're not going to get much taller than what they are right now. There are lots of blossoms and lots of small beans starting to grow. The variety is called Sonata. I don't know if that's available over here or not, but I, the package of seed that I brought back will be enough for me for several years and it says on the packet that they're uh, will be fresh through to 2013, so I should get enough to plant for several more crops of them, I guess. I've really been enjoying the kale. I've had it for three or four meals. Uh, I like it very much. I guess it's an acquired taste for some people, but solid full of vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. The variety here is an Italian heirloom called Toscano Palm, and uh, as I continue to harvest the lower leaves and it continues to grow taller. I can see what you mean by the palm. It looks more like a palm tree all the time. I'm not very impressed with the uh, heirloom Italian broccoli. Um, I've researched the name on the internet and it's supposed to be a fairly large head. So I think the same thing is happening here that's happening with some of these other heirloom seeds that I planted. They were free seeds from the um, web group Yahoo web group on heirloom gardening and I suspect that actually what they are is uh, something that is crossbred with either another variety that was in the person's garden who gathered the seeds or they cross-pollinated with the broccoli that was in somebody else's garden next door. I've harvested three heads going to have them for dinner this evening but I don't think I'll get enough out of this to ever freeze any. Uh, let's give you my hand down here. This is a full-size head really. I, I had to harvest some of the ones earlier that just got a bit bigger than this, and then they, they started to uh, bolt like they were going to bloom. So that's about full size right there. Savoy cabbage, variety drumhead, is starting now to hit up. You can see down there in the center. They're supposed to be very large. Um, remains to be seen how big they're going to get, but I don't intend to let them grow that big anyway. I don't have any use for gigantic cabbage. They get up to three or four pound size. That's when I'll harvest them, eat fresh, and uh, some for freezing. All of the various brassicas are starting to do quite well. because I'm not very pleased with the size of the broccoli, but it's still growing well. They've had three applications of BTK over the one week, over the past three weeks, and that really seems to have taken care of the cabbage worm. Um, I still have some damage on other plants like chard. Some sort of bug is eating them, but I've been following Gary from Gary's Gardens on uh, YouTube, and he's using a product called K plus Neem. Neem is spelled N-E-E-M. Evidently that's a tree, and they make uh, a, herbic a uh, herbicide, fungicide, pesticide combination uh, spray from the seeds and it's organic. You can use it right up to the day of harvest, it says. So He got me a website where I could purchase some, and I've ordered some. His garden looks so clean and nice, not a hole in anything, so I'm hoping that'll take care of whatever is eating my uh, Swiss chard. Now to finish up, I'll take a little look at something in the flower garden. This is Crocosmia, variety Lucifer. Uh, it's related to gladiolus but it's a perennial. When you plant it, it's a small corm or a bulb, just like what a gladiolia bulb is, but at least in this area, it's it's very hardy. It's been coming back every year now for a number of years. I started with one small plant, and uh, I've moved it around the garden. I have it in, in many locations now. It's just starting to bloom this year. It's a crocosmia, a very nice flower, and the hummingbirds absolutely love it. They fight over it all day long.